welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle by Joseph Neme, another of these great new constructors to the world Sudoku scene. Every puzzle I've ever done by Joseph has been absolutely stellar. So I'm looking forward to this one. It's very colourful, as you can see. It's called X Sums Meets Killer Sudoku. Um, now, I have to apologise. The last couple of days, I've done some very long videos an hour each time. Um, it's not by design, it's just the way that the puzzles fall out and obviously my ineptitude in solving them efficiently. Um, so you'll have to bear with me. We, you know, I just don't know uh, how long these videos are going to be. And this one, I have no clue either. Um, I've not been given any indication as to how, difficulty, how difficult this is. I do know it's appeared on Logic Masters Germany, but it hasn't got enough solves yet for it even to have a difficulty rating. So so it could be another long one, and if so, do forgive me. Um, now, I, I want to thank Eric Odenheimer, who sent me a very interesting email about yesterday's puzzle by Glum Hippo. Um, Eric was absolutely in love with the puzzle, um, which was this cage scraper puzzle, and he used some 3D software he has to create what the actual cage heights look like. So you can sort of see this is the actual puzzle that I solved yesterday with the cages at their correct heights. And this is the sort of, you know, the bird's eye view. I love this. Um, so Eric, thanks very much. I found that very amusing. And I can tell you that I sent that on to Glum Hippo and he also found it really cool. So very much appreciated. Um, other than that, anything else to mention? No, I mean, it's nearly Valentine's Day, which means it's almost time um, for the Sudoku Challenge by Scott Strosal to be released to all of you who are patrons of the channel. So if you are a patron, thank you, obviously. We really do appreciate it and look out for that. It's coming very soon. Um, and apart from that, let's talk about the rules of Joseph's Puzzle. So here we go. Uh, in fact, I should get Joseph's Puzzle on the screen if I'm going to do that. So there it is. It's back. Right. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Clues outside the grid are X sums, i.e. they represent the sum of the first X digits in the row or column, where X is the first number along that row or column. Now, that sounds very complicated, but it's not really. Let's look at uh, this 33 clue. That's the biggest clue by the looks of things. So whatever digit we put in the first cell of this row tells us how many cells along this row have to add up to 33. So if we put five in there, that's telling us that the first five cells have to add up to 33. If it was a six, it would be the first six cells that add to 33. If it's a seven, the first seven cells add to 33. So that's how X sums work. It's not terribly complicated once you get your head around it. Now, here is where the puzzle gets more complicated, however. In cages, digits sum to the total indicated on the top left corner of the cage, and digits cannot repeat in a cage. But the killer cages themselves must be deduced by the solver. So you can see that we don't have any killer Sudoku cages. We've just got these killer Sudoku clues and no cages to go with them. So we're going to have to work out where the cages live. Um, now, what's the next bit? Each cage is in the same row or column as its associated X sums clue. And these have been color coded, so it's clear. So that's telling us this killer cage is somehow associated with this red X sums clue. Um, oh, I was wondering where the blue one was, and it was because I'd lit this one up. But this blue one is associated with this blue one down here, the purple one with this purple one. Now, the cage can have any shape, but its, its number of cells must be equal to X, i.e. the X from its associated X sums clue. A killer cage total must always be at the top left corner of its cage. Well, that's standard. And cages may not overlap. OK, well, let's just talk about what I think this means. So that means coming back to this grey clue, if this was a six, not only would this six be telling us the sum of the first six cells in the row, and that's 33, it would be telling us that the associated X sums clue, this grey cage we have to build, has six cells in it. And we're also told that the this 32 clue is in the top left corner of its cage. So that means that as we build this cage, this cage couldn't take these cells, for example, because they couldn't be grey, because then this would obviously be the highest and leftmost cell in the cage if this was also grey. 
and cages may not overlap. Well, that's absolutely standard. So it's a weird and fascinating sounding rule set. I don't know, <laughs> it sounds rather daunting and I like it could be another long video, but wish me luck. Do have a go yourselves. The way to play is to click the link under the video as always. Now I get to play, let's get cracking. And I think with, unlike thermometers, where I'm a bit um, churlish with Mark for just instantly pencil marking all thermometers and every cell on the thermometer, um, X sums, I do feel like I might have to just look at the first cells in each of the X sums clue and pencil in the options because I have no visual, you know, with thermometers, I, I can look at them and see visual things. With X sums, it means nothing to me. Um, so, yeah, let's let's look at it. Let's start with a 33, in fact, given I've already highlighted this. Now, this can't be a 4, because if this is a 4, it's saying the first four cells in the row have to add up to 33, which is absolutely impossible. Even if we didn't have a 4 as one of the digits, 6, 7, 8, and 9 only get us as far as 30. So this is not 4. Now, I think it could be 5, though. Um, yeah, it could be 5. I was just checking that, because obviously that means that the other four cells have to add to 28, but that is possible without using a five with four, seven, eight, and nine. Um, so five, six must be possible. Se uh, seven's possible. Eight is not possible. And this gives me a chance to tell you a secret. How do I know eight is not a possible X sums clue? Well, if we were to highlight this entire row of the Sudoku and we were to look at the finished solution, what would this row add up to? Well, we know it would contain all of the digits from one to nine. If you add up all those digits, you get 45. So if this X sums clue is eight, the X sums clue is telling us those eight cells sum up to 33, but the row sums to 45. So this square would have to be a 12. That's not gonna work. So we can't put eight in this square. And I think just the options are five, six, and seven. Um, which is not a massive restriction. So let's move on to the 10. So 10, it needs at least two cells, obviously. And we've got to actually, the other thing I've got to bear in mind, and I didn't, I forgot to think about it in this one, but I think this five, six, seven is correct, is that whatever I put in here has to be a valid number of cells for its associated cage. So you can make 12 in two cells, just like you can make 10 in two cells. You can make 10 and 12 in three cells. You can make 10 and 12 in four cells as well. Obviously, 10 with four cells would have to be one, two, three, and four. But that does work because then you could make this a five or a six and it could still be a four cell cage. So that's quite interesting. Um, the things I find interesting. Let's have a look at this one. 11. Um, ah, now there's a trick with 11 in X sums. Let's. Yeah, so if you've done X sums before, you will know about this, but you can obviously make uh, 11 in two cells. You can make it in three cells. You can't make 11 in four cells. Why not? Because you might think, oh, I can make 11 with four cells. One, two, three, and five add up to 11. You're quite right, they do. But if that's a four, it's part of the sum. So although it, you, know, you can make 11 with four cells, you can't make it if you have to have four as one of the digits. So four is not right. So this is a two or a three, and that goes with a 14, which can be a two or a three. Okay, that's fine. 17, so 17, well, 17 ordinarily could be a, a domino. We could use eight and nine, but obviously a two cell sum involving a two is not gonna get you to 17. You've gotta put 15 in that square. So that is not right. Three, ah, ah, so that's, three doesn't work because if we use three that square has to be a two and part of the sum these three squares would be summing to 17 with two and three as two of the three digits so the other one would have to be a 12 that doesn't work four four is summing those cells so we've either got six or seven so we've either got 11 or 10 oh that's fine okay four is fine Four works for the 14, five. Oh, this, this is, we've got a digit. We've got a digit here because although five works 
for the, for the x sums version of this, if we try and make this a 5, you can absolutely make 5 cells add up to 17 uh, with 1, 2, 3 and 6 in those squares. But there you've got a problem because this would then have to be a 5 cell 14 cage and 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 adds up to 15. So this is wrong. This doesn't work. So this this cannot be 5 and I think we're only left with 4 for that cell. So that's not 4. And we get a 2, 3 pair in the row. And I might be wrong, but that feels like it's going to put a lot of pressure on that 14 clue. Is that wrong? So those two squares now are either adding up to 10 or 11. And I, ah, that's interesting. So either way, lots of the options are not available anymore because of the two and the three. So if these two have to add up to 10, you couldn't use two, eight, three, seven, or four, six. This would have to be one and nine. And that would mean that square's got a minimum value of five. That's still okay, isn't it? You could have five, six, and then you could have one, two down this column. Hmm. Okay, so that looks possible. If it's if this is adding up to eleven, you'd have you couldn't use two, nine, three, eight, or four, seven. So that would be a five, six pair this time. I now oh now this can be a one. Okay. Uh, this is yeah. I think this is a red herring. Sorry, I'm getting. Um, waylaid on my journey around the grid. Let's continue. We can do this glue. 11. So we've already looked at 11. It's 2 or 3. And 11 is associated with this cell, which can also be a 2 or a 3 cell clue. So that's no use. Um, 9. Well, nine can't, 9 can't be 1, because obviously 1 and 9 are not the same number. There's a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic. Can be 2, can be 3, can't be 4, because 4 cells have a minimum value of 10. That goes with a 15 cage, which could be 2 cells or 3 cells, so that's working. So we need this one to do some damage. Um, right, well this is 2, 3 or 4 again, isn't it? But this goes with this cage. Now this cage is in the bottom row. So it can never go upwards. So that whatever we put in this cell. Ah, ah, so remember what we said, what the secret I told you. The secret I told you about row two is interesting in row nine. Because can this square be a four? The answer is no. Why is it no? Well, if this is a 4, what shape is this 15 cage? It can never go upwards because then this wouldn't be the top left handmost cell in the cage. So if this is 4, it has to be exactly those four cells. But the x sums clue is exactly those four cells. So that would mean 8 cells in this row add up to 10 for the x sums clue plus 15 for the cage. That's 25, which means that square has to equal 20. That won't work. That is not 4. That's quite lovely, actually. So that means... So this is 2 or 3, and this 15 cage, therefore, must always take that square. So I'm going to highlight that. And if it's 3, those cells would add up to 25, which means these three squares have got to add up to 20. Okay, that's actually less constrained than I was hoping. If it's two, you've got you've got five cells that need to add to 20. Without using, you couldn't use two and three in that sum. One, two, four, five. Oh, that's fine, actually. There are degrees of freedom. So, um, hmm. okay, so that's a bit... Oh, I've got a 2-3 pair in this column now. Okay, that's, re that's really... We did, some, we did do some interesting logic there, but it's not actually broken the puzzle open at all. Maybe I've got to think harder about row one. So in row one, 
these two squares, they were either adding to 10, they were either 1 and 9 or adding to 11, they were 5 and 6. So these are either 1, 9 or 5, 6. Now, if, so let's think about this. If this is 1, 9, the 14 cage now, this cell of the 14 cage cannot be anything other or cannot be anything lower than 5, which means it can never come to this square because then that would be a 6 and it couldn't come to this square or this square for its third square and it needs four squares of all things. So, so the only way this works, if this is one nine, is this is five, six. Ah, now I've got a two, three pair here. So it would have to be five, six, one, two. You'd get an L tetromino if this is one nine. But if, if this is five, six, I think that's less constrained because you can put one in here now. One, Five, six, so that one, seven, you could put a seven here. Ah, but you couldn't, ah, that's interesting. So let's just look at that for a second. If this was all, if this was five, six. Now you can see this square can be a one. The minimum this square could be would be seven. So this domino would add up to eight. So if you try and include this cell in the 14 cage, you'd have eight in it. You can't take this square because this would have to be an 8 or a 9. You'd have to take this one, which would be a 5. And you've now got 13 in three cells. So the only way that works is if this is a 1. And that repeats the one in the cage. So that means, I think, that if this is 5, 6, you have to go, you have to go 1 here. And you have to come down. Oh, but then... Uh, and you probably, do you have to twist around there still though? Because if this is five, this would, yes, you do, because you need, you can't take two digits down here because then these three squares would add up to four, five, and six as a minimum. So you, so either way you get a green tetromino. There we go. That's what I've managed to conclude. Something absolutely useless. Um, so this, we don't know. <laughs> This, whatever this is, it comes down here and bends there. Right. Sorry. That's, I think this is a total red herring because how do we use this? I don't even know what's in this domino at the bottom. In, in one situation, it's a one, two pair. In the other situation, it's sort of middling digits with the one up here. Ah, bobbins. <laughs> Sorry, my phone's buzzing at me. Everything's going wrong. Um, let me just double check that's nothing urgent dinner for the oh that's fine okay so um five six seven can we do anything with the 33 clue we can ah well maybe we can if it's seven that's certainly putting pressure on those two squares they would have to be three nine Ah, ha, got you. Right, okay. This sev 7 in this square doesn't work because remembering the 45 rule, these 7 add up to 33. This domino has to add up to 12, but it can't include 7 or 4. So this would have to be a 3, 9 pair. So what's this square? Well, it has to be a 2. What's this square? Remember the x sums, it's got to be a 9. Now you can't put two 9s in row 2 or box 3. So that is ruled out and 7 can be removed from this square. So I'm going to look at 6. Is this 6? Is 6 possible? 6 is... Ru so that's saying these 3 add up to 12 now. Without... Right, so we couldn't use four and six in this sum, and we can't use two and three, because if we put the two, three pair in here, this cell will have no fill. So two, fives. Right, so there must be a one in this sum, because if there's no one, the minimum I could make these squares would be two, five, seven. That does not add up to 12, that adds to 14, so that's no use. So there's definitely a one in this sum. 
um, so it's one and then two cells adding to 11 that are not five, six or four, seven. Good grief, this is complicated. So one, three, eight, is that a problem? Oh yeah, that's that. okay, we can instantly rule that out. One, three, eight won't work because that means that squares a two. And we know when this squares a two, we need a nine here, which we definitely can't have if this is one, three and eight. So we've only got one option left, one, two, nine. If we can get rid of this, it's we're in clover. So let's see if we can. One, two, nine. This would be a three. But those means these two squares have to add up to eight. Oh. Two, nine. This is. No. No. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Now, if this is three, what are those two squares? Well, these two have, have to add up to ten. And they can't be used two, three, or four. We, we've looked at this. This was a one, nine pair. You can't put a one or a nine in here if this is a one, two, nine triple. So actually, this is a fruitful digression because we have proved this square here is not six. It must be five. Now. Right, okay, now look. Those four squares now have to add up to 12 without using five, which means they're one, two, three, and six. Which means this can't be a two again, because this can't be a nine. So that's a three, that's a two. There's no three in here, so this is the three. Three, these are adding up. These are, ah, yeah, look, these, this domino has to add up to eight. So we can't put a 2 or a 6 here because that will need a 2 or a 6 here. And we know the 2 and the 6 are definitely in those three squares. So this is a 1. This is a 7. No 1 here. And... Well, yeah, we know this is a 1-9 pair to make the 17 work. Now with a 1 here, we know the order. So suddenly we're actually getting somewhere here. One, yeah, one twos and 3s. Where's, where does one, two, and three go in box one? They've all got to be in those three, these three cells here. One, two, three, triple. The 10 clue, of course, gives us an eight here by the X sums. There must be a seven in one of those two squares by Sudoku. And... No, look, this... Oh, phew. This just works. We've looked at this already, but one, two, three, four, and five are looking at this square. So it, ca it must be six, because if it's any higher than six, given it's a four cell cage, it will break. So this is a six, five pair. This must be one and a two. That places a three. The two, three pair in column one give us a one and a two. And that means. That means something, I'm sure. I just don't know what it is yet. Those two squares are five and eight. Let's go to, uh, so these two squares are five and seven by Sudoku. And there's a five, oh yeah, okay, there's a five here. So this, this is a five, this is a seven. These two squares are a seven, eight pair. And these two squares are a four, nine pair. And now, if you don't, actually, I'm going to fill these in first, four, six, and nine, and then I'm just going to take stock on what I have and haven't used here. So, because, oh, because the other thing is, of course, I've got to remember that everything I put into these squares affects the size of these cages at the bottom. So, I've used the 11, that adds up to 11. This is now a three cell cage. That's adding up to 17. This is a four cell cage and we've done it. This, this is a two cell cage adding up to 12. This is a five cell cage. Now this 32 is a five cell cage. Oh look, right, okay. It ca cages don't overlap. So this square is blocking the path of my gray cage. It's got to take that square because it can't... Um, oh, that gray is different. I'm going to change them both so they're the same colour. Um, the um, 
Because this is the top left corner of the cage, because it's the one with the cage total, if we can't come to that one, we must take that one. We've now got 13. Ah, now, so this square is not possible to be in the cage anymore. Because if that's in the cage, if we make that grey, we've then, we've then got to make 17 from two more digits. And we can't repeat the 9, so that's impossible. So this square is not, not in, which means that one must be in. We've now got 21. We need 12 more. Have we got 21? Yes, we've got 21. And I need 12 more. I'm just wondering, how can I get 12 more? I can't do it. Because I've got... How do I get 12 more without repeating a digit and without using 5 and 7? If I can't come upwards... What have I done wrong here? 21. Oh! <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. I'm confusing myself, thank goodness. It's not 33 that is the sum of the cage, it's 32. Whoa, that is horrible. Okay, gosh, I that was a horrible moment. I was like... I didn't feel I'd made a mistake and I was like, why doesn't this work? Okay, so let's come back. I might have to just check the logic on the 8 because I'm not sure whether I use the 33 or the 32 to eliminate this square. So let's check again. I've got 13. If I use this square, I've got 16. Oh, I'm totally thrown now, you know. I'm t I feel totally thrown. Um, no, okay, because if I took the 3, I need 16 in 2 cells, don't I? Which would require a 9, so this still is wrong. Okay, but I did do I did do it wrong when I looked at it before. So this has been a very unappealing digression. Now, I've now got 21. I need 11 more without using 4, 7, 3, 8, or 2, 9. So I need 5 and 6. Ah, thank goodness, that can be a 6. So this is a 6. This must be a five. It's the only place the five can go. And we finish that gray cage. And these squares are not six. And thank goodness for that. <laughs> right. Now what do we do? We've got to... Uh, um, so I presume I've either, I've probably got to use this two or this three, I think, because other than that, I've not actually got any new information unless Sudoku is going to help me. Yeah, so, okay, you know, if, if, if I put two in there and that, this would put a seven here, but that actually is perfectly fine. Two here doesn't affect the two here, two here. Ooh! Ouch! Two there is a problem now because of that nine. If you put two here, I've got to put nine here under the X sums, and I can't. So this is not two. This is three. Does that matter? Well, it means those two squares. Oh, good grief. This is beautiful. Yeah, this is beautiful. These two squares have to add up to eight. We can't use three, five. And we can't use one seven, so this is a two six pair. And now I'm wondering about the now I'm wondering about the fourteen cage. Yeah. Oh this is this is really clever, actually. This is really clever. Because how do we form this fourteen cage? Well, one thing we can rule out very quickly is a cage that does that. Because if the... Oh, the blues are different as well. Let's make all the blues the same. Oh, that's not even worked. But anyway, these... If we try and make the cage a horizontal cage, well, you can see that this would be implying that the number 14 was equal to the number 11. That does not work. Okay? So we can't make it a horizontal cage. So the next option might be that we took this square and this square. Well, that's also not going to work because 2 plus 6 is 8 
What do I need to complete the cage? It's another six. I can't repeat a digit in a cage. So this, actually, this domino is just not in. So the 14 cage has to be those two squares. And this is going to limit my 10 cage. Yeah, it totally, it totally fixes the 10 cage. The 10 cage cannot do anything but just stop. So this square becomes a 2. That becomes a 3. The x sums becomes an 8. The 15 cage now doesn't have an 8 in it. So that's 6 and 9. That locks 9, look, into one of those two squares by Sudoku. Because there can't be a 9 in these three. And we probably... Can we limit... Uh, if this is 6, how do we make these two squares add to 8? We can't. It's impossible. Again, we can't use 3, 5. You can't use 2, 6. And you can't put 1 or 7 in this square. So this, this is 2. This is 6. And hopefully it's possible to make a 12 sum here. Yes, it is. You can't use 4, 8 or 3, 9. But you can use 5, 7 just like that. 6, 2 is done. Where do you put a 3 in row 9 now? Can't go here, can't go here, so it's got to go there. Where do you put 4 in row 9 now? You've got to put it here, this has got to be a 1. The 4 fixes the 4 and the 9, and we are actually making progress. Um, Okay, so now let's take stock again. What have we done? We have done, oh, I haven't used this 11 clue on this 15 cage. So that's probably what we need to do next. So this is saying this is a three cell cage. Eight here, actually, I've just noticed it's given me an eight there. We've got Right, okay, that's useful. That 8 is useful because we can't put a cage in like that now because that would be a 15 cage. Well, to be a 15 cage, it requires an 8 here. So this 15 cage has to take this square. Um, okay, and then we've got a choice. It's either going to take that cell or it's going to take that cell. So if it took this square, these would have to add up to 12 without using 3, 9. Or four eight five it would have to be five seven. And that might be possible. I can't see why that's ruled out. So the the other thing we'd have to do is to include this square in the fifteen. Now if we do that these three would have to add to fifteen without using two, three, or six. So they'd have to have a one in them. Because why would they have to have a 1 in them? Well, if they didn't, the minimum we could make these squares would be 4, 5, and 7. And 4, 5, and 7, not 4, 5, and 7, is that 4? Yes, 4, 5, and 7, that adds to 16. 4, 5, and 7, yeah. So 16 is not equal to 15, so that doesn't work. So we'd have to put a 1 in. We need the other two cells to add up to 14 without using 6. So this would have to be 1, 5, 9. And that doesn't work. 9 and 9 can't go in any of the squares. So this is not 1, 5, 9. It's, therefore, that square is not in it, and that square is in it. These are a domino adding to 12. We've already looked at this. This is 5, oopsie. This is 5, and this is 7. And so far, so good. Um, now, what next? We've got one, four, nine into those squares. Let's just put that in and have a quick look at it. That can't be nine. The 10 clue. Oh no, it's not the 10 clue, it's the 2 clue I've got to look at. So this, yeah, yeah, okay. That can never have a 1 in it, because it's a, a 2 cell sum adding up to 12. 
this can never be in it because we can't attach it to an 8. So the 12 clue is definitely including this red cell. And this, this cell is either 8 or 3 and doesn't seem to be resolved. So what have I not used yet? I've not, I don't think I've used that clue at all. I'm not sure I've even thought about that clue. Oh, I've not thought about the 9 clue. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I could have looked at this before. 9 in 3 cells under the X sums. There are two ways of making it using a 3. 3, 2, 4. Well, that's ruled out. You can't put 2 or 4 in this square. Or 3, 1, 5. That is fine. And the 5 goes here, therefore. The 1 goes here. That square's not 1 anymore. That means that we get a 1 in column 4. That fixes a 1 in box 7. There's a 1 now fixed in box 5, look. And then probably is a 1 fixed, yep, yeah, there's a 1 fixed in box 6. I think we've done all the 1s. We have. Um, where, does, where does 3 go in box uh, 5? I think by Sudoku it's got to go in this square and once we get that we know this square is a 9 this is a 4 and that well I think we're closing in now I should probably shouldn't be too confident but these cells have then got to be 4, 8 and 9 so you can see these two here well, we can see this is a 9. That's probably the easiest thing to see. This is a 4-8 pair. This square, this is a 2-5 pair. The 5 up here tells us which way round that goes. Okay, so those squares are 3, 6 and 7. There's a 3 and a 6 already in column 1, so that's 7. This is 3, this is 6. Those two squares have got to be a 2, 7 pair. These two squares have got to be a 9 and a something. Why can't I see that? 9 and 6, uh, which we can do. And those two squares, therefore, have got to be 4 and 8, which we can't do. Okay, so let's come back. Let's look at this one. So we know that this is a 3-cell cage adding up to 15. Ah, but this cell itself is restricted, look, because it can't be 1, 2, or 3, I think, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, it's just a naked single. Right, that's an 8, that would have been an easy way to get through this. 8, 5 go in there, that must be an 8, that's a 9, that's a 4, this is a 3. Oh, that doesn't fix the 4s and the 8s over here, but surely this is now... So this is 8. We need two more cells that add to 7. Right, well the 1 can't be in it then. Because the 1 would need a 6 and it can't get one there because of that 6. So the cage must do this, I hope. Yeah, 2, 5 is available. Thank goodness for that. So 5 here. 2 here. Oh, okay. Well that's good, but it's not... Well, maybe it's this square then. Yeah, that's the 7 that's going to disambiguate this 2, 7 few. That must be a 2. Those squares there are 4, 6 and 9. That's a 4. That's a 9. That's a 6. That 4 fixed the 4 and the 8 at last. That gives us the 8, the 8, the 4, the 4, the 9, the 9, the 6. The 6 goes here. This should be a 7. And that looks good, actually. Let's click tick. Yes. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, I have to say, I have a real soft spot for puzzles where you have to build the cages yourself. And Joseph, that is a wonderful example. And the first I've ever seen using X sums. So brilliant, really innovative and well executed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back later, of course, with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.